Welcome to our lecture online. So now we should be ready to find the range in the domain of any example. Here's some medium type examples. And so let's see how we would solve it. Again, I recommend that you graph the function or the relation in this case, that's the relation, here's the function, so that you can see where the limits are. Here we recognize that this looks like a circle because this can be written as x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared, which means it's a circle with radius 5. So therefore, we can go ahead and draw the circle on the xy plane. This is 5, 5, minus 5, and minus 5. So you can clearly see graphically what the limits are. We can see that the x values are bounded by plus or minus 5, and so are the y values. That means that the domain is equal to all the values x, such that negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 5. And the same for the range, that's equal to all the values x, such that negative 5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to positive 5. So, clearly, the domain and the range are exactly the same when you have a circle with the center at the origin. Now let's go ahead and graph this function right here. Notice because the negative sign, it's a parabola that opens downward, and the plus one, that means it's moved up by one unit. So the maximum value of the parabola is plus one, and the parabola opens downward. Now we realize that in the x direction, parabolas do not have any limitations. The further you go down, the farther it goes to the right and to the left, and in the limit, as you go infinitely far down, you will infinitely go to the right and infinitely to the left. There's no restriction, which means that the domain is equal to all the values x, such that x is an element of all the real numbers. There are no restrictions. In the y direction, however, you can see that nothing can be larger than the positive 1. So that means that all the y values will be 1 or less. That means the range is equal to the, all the values y, such that y is less than or equal to a positive 1. And so that's how you can define the domain and the range in this example. So most of the time, it's fairly straightforward. You can simply look at the graph, decide where your limitations are, and then just plop down the range and the domain. In other cases, we have to take the limit, you have to look for the asymptotes, for the values that x cannot be because you cannot have zero denominators, and then you have to do those additional checks to make sure you got everything right and you find all the exceptions, and that is how it's done. What if you're like me, kind of bring data as to what the graph looks like, and then you want to do it algebraically? You can think, when I see that as a student, I may not know that's a circle. If you don't realize immediately it's a circle, you could waste the, what you should do. Start, start plotting points, or I would just think I would find algebraically. Yes, so in the case that you look at that and you don't quite realize that's a circle, what you can do is find the places where it crosses the x and the y axis. That's always a good place to start. So when you try to graph it or see what it looks like, you go, okay, let x equals 0. When x equals 0, which means that's on the y-axis, then you can write that y squared equals 25 or y equals plus or minus 5 when you take the square root of both sides. So that means that when x equals 0, you have y equals plus 5 and y equals negative 5. And then you do the same thing for let y equal 0 and they end up with x squared equals 25, and then x equals plus or minus 5 when you take the square root of both sides. And then, of course, when y equals 0, you're on the x-axis, you get the plus or minus 5, and then you realize, ah, it's a circle. Well, I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get those four points, and then, you're, and then when you combine them, you end up with a circle. Oh, that's really weird. <laughs> Well, and we did do those a few chapters ago. So if you remember the lessons from a few segments ago. Then I was thinking asymptotes and you go, ooh, that's really weird. How should it go? <laughs> okay, just asking. How about the other one? The other one, it's the same thing. You probably would want to set up a table of values. You put in x values, you put in y values. And the first thing you want to do is when x equals 0, then y equals 1. Now when x equals 1, then y equals 0. And when x equals 2, then y equals negative 3. 
And when x equals 3, then y equals negative 8. And then you start plotting the points. We have 0, 1. We have 1, 0. Then we have 2, negative 3. And then we have 3, negative 8. And then when you collect, connect them, you say, ah, that's one side. And then you go in the other direction. And then you go x equals uh, negative 1. And negative 1, you get the same value. You get y equals uh, uh, 0. And negative 2, you get negative 3. So on the other side, you get this point, you get this point, and then you collect the dots, and you realize what you're dealing with. So you, you have to go back to your old techniques. You start plotting points, plotting points, finding the places where it crosses the x and the y axis, and that's a good start. So if you're brain dead, just plot points. When you're brain dead, plot points. That's right. Always works. <laughs> Hey, that's what I did. When I didn't know what was going on, I began to plot points to kind of see what it looks like. It's a good way.